Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Waalaikumsalam doktor. Okay, so today we will continue with our lecture um, regarding compensator. So on Monday, we have learned about uh, lag compensator. So we have covered ideal integral compensator and also um, an example of lag compensator. So basically for lag compensator, uh, we can use lag compensator to uh, adjust a system or improve a system in terms of reducing the steady state error while maintaining the same transient response. So in lag compensator, Zc is always uh, less than Pc or Zc is more negative than Pc. So today we are going to uh, continue with compensator. Um, but uh, we look at a, another type of compensator known as ideal derivative compensator. So uh, in integral compensator, we have um, this form, okay? S plus A over S. But for ideal compensator, we don't have the over S, okay? We only have uh, S plus ZC. So we only add another pole to the system without adding any, uh, another zero to the system without any uh, adding any other poles. So let's look at uh, this example. Okay, So let's say you have this configuration. So we have a plan GS equals K over S, S plus 4 times S plus 6. And we want to add a derivative compensator k times s plus zc so we want to improve the system uh, so the system has a percent overshoot of 16 percent and we want to reduce the uh, settling time by three times so firstly we use the uh, percent overshoot to determine the damping ratio so from the percent overshoot, which is 16%, we can determine the damping ratio using this formula. So just uh, replace a percent overshoot with 16 and you will get a damping ratio equals 0 And then we can determine the uh, uh, natural frequency uh, using uh, the derivation or the calculation that I showed uh, on Monday. So uh, don't worry, we don't ask you to calculate this, but we will give you the dominant pole. Okay. So for example, this uh, calculation, actually we want to find this uh, value, the intersection between this line here and the root locus to find the dominant pole. But uh, because to find the dominant pole is kind of um, difficult, so we will give you the dominant pole. So this is the value calculated, okay? Assume you have calculate and you get this value. So from this value and the damp uh, damping ratio uh, and also natural frequency, we can find the settling time, setting time of the system at 16% overshoot. So at 16% overshoot, the settling time equals 3.35. And we can find the peak time. And we can also find the uh, steady state error 
but in the end we want to reduce the settling time by three times okay while maintaining the same uh, overshoot percent overshoot so maintaining the same overshoot meaning that you maintain the same damping ratio while settling time is reduced by three times okay so you get 3.35 from uh, the original uh, uncompensated uh, system so you just reduce it three times so you get uh, the new system should have settling time at 1.117 so from this value we need to find the new uh, natural frequency okay so we have a damping ratio and we have settling time so we need to find the new uh, natural frequency so in this case uh, damping ratio time natural frequency equals 3.582 so we just um, 4 divided by 1.117 okay okay so you get 3.58182 okay and then from this value we can determine the new uh, dominant pole okay so this is uh, going back to the first uh, slide here okay so to determine the new uh, dominant pole you need to use this uh, location okay so the new pole has a uh, real axis value at negative damping ratio time natural frequency and the imaginary axis value at j uh, natural frequency square root one minus damping ratio square okay so this slide basically covers all the formula needed okay so we find this uh, value which is equals 3.582 calculated earlier and we can find this value by uh, again using the same uh, damping ratio and find the natural frequency and then just substitute in this uh, formula to get the imaginary axis value so the new uh, poles will be uh, 6.14j plus 3.582 and these new poles are not on the original root locus, meaning that it's not on this uh, root locus, okay? The root locus of this transfer function. So because of that, we need to design a new compensator so that these new poles will be located on the root locus of the system. So how to, define, how to uh, find ZC? Okay, so basically we want to find zc and also the gain so in this case we want to find zc first so to find zc we need to calculate uh, the angle okay so let's say we define zc here the circle here at value a and then the crosses here are the value of the poles of gs so gs we have three poles s equals zero minus four and minus six so you just label zero minus four and minus six and then here the point here is the dominant pole that you calculated earlier which is equal 6.14j plus negative 3.582 so we want to find the angle the total angle uh, for this dominant pole so for this pole to be on the root locus the sum of angles must be equal 180 degree okay so this is the rules of root locus okay so the point here if it's on the root locus then the sum of all the angle theta 1 theta z theta 2 and theta 3 must be 180 degree so we want uh, we find first theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. So theta 1, you just use uh, the angle formula, okay? So uh, tri uh, trigonometry. 
So we get 120.26 theta 2, we get 86.11 uh, and theta 3, 68.5. So we don't know theta z because it, uh, the value is a here. So we want to find a. So find the angle, find the total angle equals 180 degree. So theta of zero minus the summation of theta of poles. Okay, so theta z minus 120.26 minus 86.11 minus 68.5 equals 180. Rearrange, so you get uh, theta z equals 454.87. So this is basically a rotation, okay? They are complete one revolution. So just minus 360 degree. So minus 360 degree, you get 94.87. So theta Z is 94.87. And then we can use, uh, we can find value of A by using uh, trigonometry, okay? So uh, the value of A, we can uh, measure this angle. So this angle, uh, again, is 98.87. So maybe we can, um, uh, using the same concept uh, as this one, okay? So theta z equals uh, 180 minus, uh, formula which is trivial. Okay, so minus uh, this angle. So it's equal um, the height uh, tangent minus one. The height six point one four over. this length okay? so that length equals um, 3.58 minus a okay calculation so just rearrange and find the value of a so here a you get 0 0.523 okay so uh, a actually three point zero six okay so a is actually your zc so you get now uh the compensator trans function k times s plus zc or 3.06 okay so don't worry we will look at an example later so now uh the problem is we need to find k so to find the value of k uh, we can use uh, the length. Okay? Later, I will show you how to find K. I think similar to um, uh, light compensator, we can use length. But um, later, I will show you uh, an example how to find K. Okay, so uh, just now it's about... Uh, ideal derivative compensator. So uh, now let's look at uh, what is lead compensator, okay? Or lead compensator. So lead compensator generally used to speed up transient response by improving the settling time, okay? While lead compensator uh, improve the steady state error, okay? While maintaining the same uh, transient response. But for lead compensator, uh, we want to improve the settling time while maintaining the same transient response. And this will improve the system stability by shifting the root locus to the right. Okay. Uh, later, if you do your project, you will see the root locus will shift to the right. But in this slide, you cannot see it. Okay. So this can be done uh, by adding a compensator zero and compensator pole such that Zc now bigger than PC. 
for lead compensator ZC less than PC but for lead compensator ZC bigger than PC so for lead compensator you improve the steady state error but for uh, lead compensator you improve the settling time okay, so we add a lead compensator so same formula as lead compensator but this time uh, the position of ZC and PC such that ZC bigger than PC but lead compensator ZC less than PC okay so let's look at uh, this example so consider a plant with open loop poles at 0, minus 4 and minus 6 okay so basically the same uh, transpansion as earlier okay as this one Design a lead compensator that has 16% overshoot and threefold reduction in settling time. So you reduce the settling time three times. So given that the dominant pole is at negative 1.2 plus 2.06 J with a gain of K equals 43.2. Okay, so the dominant pole is here in this uh, root locus and Later, if you do your root locus uh, project, uh, uh, the uh, compensator project, you can choose this point, for example, and look at the properties. Okay, so at this point, we have gained 43.2, the dominant poles or the pole value, the damping and the overshoot. And also the frequency, but the frequency is in radian per second. So uh, similar, okay. So frequency omega n. So let's look at how we can uh, design the lead compensator. So firstly, uh, we can find the um, damping ratio. So uh, in this case, you already been given all the necessary uh, properties, but maybe in uh, exam, you only be given the dominant pole. So from the dominant pole, you can determine uh, all of this unless you uh, use MATLAB. Okay, but in this case, we have the percent overshoot, so we can determine the damping ratio using this formula. Okay, so using this formula, you get damping ratio equals zero point five zero three nine. And then damping ratio times the frequency equals 1.2. So this is uh, from the first slide, okay? Just take this value, dominant pole value, 1.2. So 1.2 here equals um, damping ratio times omega n. So from here, you can find omega n. So omega n equals 2.381, okay? So just divide by the damping ratio. And then from here, you can determine the settling time. So here, the settling time is not given. So you need to determine uh, manually. So TS equals 4 over um, damping ratio times omega n. So you get 3.33, the settling time for the original system. And then the question asks you to reduce the settling time three times. So just TS divided by 3. So the new TS should be 1.11 so from here you can determine the new uh, dominant poles okay so firstly you can determine the uh, location of the real axis of the new dominant pole so equals 4 divided by the new ts so 4 divided by 1.11 you get 3.604 so this is the, uh, the new uh, sigma of uh, new poles. And then using the same uh, damping ratio, because you want to maintain the same damping ratio. So we know that the new poles uh, equals uh, damping ratio times omega n uh, nu. 
Okay, so we need to determine the omega n nu. So same damping ratio. So we get omega n nu equals 7.152. So now we can find the uh, j axis or the imaginary axis of the new pole. Okay, so use the formula from the first slide. So just substitute this value, omega n times square root of 1 minus um, damping ratio squared. Okay, sorry. So you get 5.037. So the new poles is at negative 3.604 plus 5.037j. Then you can uh, find the angle to determine the value of PC and ZC. Okay, so we have poles here at zero, minus four, and minus six. And then the dominant pole is at um, 5.037. And somewhere here, negative 3.604. Okay, so since you are not given any value for the compensator poles or zero, so we choose something, uh, some values. Okay, so in this case, we choose uh, PC equals negative 20 so that it, it is very big, okay, or very small, uh, very big in terms of negative or very small compared to the ZC. Okay, so we choose negative 20, okay, somewhere uh, here, negative 20. And then we find the angle. We say theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and theta P. Okay. So we find the angle. So theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4. So theta 4. So find the angle as usual okay, using trigonometry. And then we make sure that the total angle equals 180. So find the summation. So we don't know the ZC. Okay? So let's say ZC is somewhere here, for example, here. Okay, so let's say ZC here. So theta ZC minus the summation of all theta of the poles equals 180. So we get theta ZC equals uh, one hundred and twelve point seven two. Okay, so from this value, we know that uh, theta ZC is somewhere. Um, let's say here is the dominant pole. So this angle is more than 90 degree, meaning that um, your theta ZC is measured here. Okay? If you put uh, ZC here, then it is less than 90 degree. Okay, so theta ZC or the position of ZC must be uh, less than 3.604. Uh, it cannot be here because if it is here, then it is less than 90 degree. But you calculated ZC, theta ZC, more than 90 degree. So it should be located less than 3.604. Okay, so we know that ZC is here, then we can find the value of ZC using trigonometry. So in this case, ZC is at negative 2.109. Okay, so we get ZC, then we can calculate the gain, okay, uh, using the length formula. Later, I will show you uh, from example, okay, uh, from uh, tutorial. Okay, so uh, for lead compositor, we need uh, we can reduce the settling time. 
And to determine uh, theta ZC, we can use the angle, the concept of angle, and find the value of theta ZC or theta PC, whichever that um, is required to find. Okay. Okay, so let's look at um, tutorial. Okay, so tutorial number three and four is about lead, uh, lead compensator. Okay, so uh, so the problem with this question is that I don't give any dominant poles. So to find dominant pole is uh, crazy, okay? You need to use um, something else. So uh, untuk memudahkan uh, nak tunjuk example, uh, I use MATLAB instead, okay? But don't worry, in your exam, we will give you the dominant pole, okay? We give the value of dominant pole. Okay, so consider a unity feedback system. So GS is the forward transfer function. So design a lead compensator that has 20% overshoot with settling time uh, reduction of five times. Okay, so we reduce the settling time by five times. So untuk memudahkan kerja, saya guna MATLAB. And then uh, from the MATLAB, um, I can I can um, determine the point uh, that has damping ratio 20%. But the problem is that uh, I cannot determine exactly 20%. The best that I can get is 25%. So kita tukar soalan, kita guna 25%. Okay, so at 25%, the pole is negative 6.02 plus 13.6 J. So, if you list blue. Okay, and then um, from here we can determine uh, damping ratio, percent overshoot and so on. But in this case, we already have a uh, damping ratio. So in case uh, for you, maybe in your exam, we normally don't give the damping ratio. We only give the percent overshoot. So the percent overshoot is 25%. Um, So you can use the uh, formula for uh, finding the uh, damping ratio. Okay, so finding damping ratio equals uh, ln percent overshoot over 100 divided by square root of pi squared plus, this is negative, uh, ln uh, percent overshoot over 100 squared. Okay, so just plug in in calculator, so you get uh, 0 0.404, okay, from MATLAB, okay. So you can calculate yourself later. Okay, so we get damping ratio and the dominant pole from uh, MATLAB, okay. So now we can calculate the uh, frequency. So frequency, uh, we know that uh, damping ratio times frequency equals 6.02. Okay, so this value here. So you can calculate frequency 6.02 divided by 0 0.404. So uh, uh, frequency equals 14.9 uh, summer. So in exam, the things that you need to calculate is this one, 
and this one, okay? Usually we will give you the dominant pole and also the percent overshoot. So now we can determine the settling time. So settling time, Ts equals four over damping ratio times omega n. So four divided by 6.02. You get settling time equals 0 0.6645. Okay, so let's go back to the question. So the question says uh, reduce the settling time by five times. Okay, so we change from 20% to 25%. Okay, for the sake of example. So later, if you want to uh, do this tutorial, uh, Sebab kan dia tak bagi dominant pole because uh, the question doesn't give you the dominant pole. So use MATLAB just for the sake of practice, okay? So here in this case, uh, reduce the settling time five times, okay? So the first part here is from the original uh, transfer function. So now we want to find the new um, uh, transfer function by adding compensator. So we want to find all new uh, performance parameter. So the new TS, we want to reduce uh, the original TS by five times. So we get new TS equals 0 0.1329. Okay, so we reduce it to five times while maintaining the same uh, damping ratio at 25%. Uh, percent. Uh, no, the damping ratio at 25% percent is 0 0.404. 0 0.404. So now we, we want to find the new uh, frequency or natural frequency. So using the formula for TS, okay? Okay, so just plug in the number. So the new um, natural frequency is 74.5. Now we need to find the new dominant pole. Which is at negative um, damping ratio times omega n plus square root of omega n 1 minus damping ratio square Okay, so uh, plug in the number. Okay, so this is the new dominant pole. So compared to the old one. So the new dominant pole is not on the root locus. Okay? It should be not on the root locus. Then um, what we need to do now is to determine the pole and zero of the compensator. 
So maybe we can sketch this first in uh, an S plane. And then this uh, pole is somewhere here. Okay, so from this sketch, maybe we can choose uh, a PC value, okay, or a ZC value, whichever you feel um, okay with, okay. Um, usually in exam also, we will give you either uh, PC or ZC. But for lead compensator, always uh, bear in mind that uh, ZC always bigger than PC. Okay, so in this case, maybe we choose uh, ZC. Okay, let's say we choose ZC. So let's say we choose ZC maybe here, ZC here, let's say negative 10. So that uh, later PC uh, should be located uh, here. Or you can choose PC, let's say you choose PC equals minus 60, for example, and find ZC. Or in this case, I choose ZC and I find PC from the angle calculation. Okay, so for lag compensator, you can find ZC and PC using the uh, ratio. Okay, But for lead compensator, to find uh, ZC or PC, you use angle. Okay, now we can uh, find the angles. Okay, so we need to find this angle. Let's say theta 1. And this angle, theta 2. And this angle, theta 3. And also this angle, uh, ZC, theta ZC. So we don't have this PC here, theta PC. So we know theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and theta ZC. We don't know theta PC. So let's find the angle. So theta 1 equals 180 degree minus tangent minus 1. So the height is 68.15. Divided by this length. Okay, 30.098. So we get 113.83. And then theta, uh, theta ZC. So same, 180 minus tangent minus 1. 68.15 divided by uh, this length. Okay, so 30.098 minus 10. Okay, panjang dia. So here. hundred and six point four three, And then theta 2. Okay, so 180 minus tangent minus 1, 68.15, 30.098 minus 20. So 98, 98.43. And lastly, theta theta 3. So theta 3 is uh, behind negative 30.098. So we don't use 180. So just tangent minus 1. 68.15 divided by uh, this length. So 40 
minus 30.098. So you get 81.73 degree. So now we can uh, sum them up and equal to 180. So theta ZC minus uh, summation of theta poles equals 180. So theta ZC is 106.43 minus sum of 113.83 plus 98.43 plus 81.73 and plus theta pc that we need to find okay equals So theta PC equals um, negative 367.56. Okay, later you check. Uh, okay, betul ke tak? Okay, so 367.56. Oh, kenapa lah macam ni? Um, kira balik lah. Ni. Okay, so theta PC. Three hundred sixty-seven one five six. Three hundred sixty-seven negative. So it's measure here. Hmm. Dia di luar. So, um, I think we can take a positive one. Okay. So, maybe it becomes 7.56. Because uh, always remember that uh, this is root locus. So, if you have a dominant pole here, you also have dominant pole um, mirror. Okay. Mirror about the real axis. So, maybe... Uh, it measures here, but with this angle, so uh, sama lah kot kat atas pun angle yang sama. But don't worry, because uh, in this uh, example, uh, in this tutorial, I don't give any PC or ZC. But in exam, we will give either one, okay? So let's say PC, uh, theta PC 7.56. So we find the value of um, this point here, PC. So tangent uh, theta PC equals uh, 68.15 divided by this length here. Okay, so that length is PC minus uh, 30.098. So let's calculate.
So PC equals a very, very big value. Well, at least from my calculation, I'm not sure uh, later if you correct, uh, calculate, uh, maybe you get different values. Okay, so PC is at uh, this value, okay? Or the new poles at negative uh, 543.6. So we can uh, get the uh, transformation of compensator equals K S plus. So ZC is 10 divided by S plus 543.6. But in this example, we don't, uh, we need to find K. So to find K, we need to find the length. Okay, so again, uh, let's uh, sketch a new one. Okay, so to find K, we need to find the length of this uh, line here. First, we want to find L1 and then L2, L3, L4, and also L5. Okay, we find all of this line and uh, the length. And we use the formula from uh, locus topic, okay? So gain K equals um, one over M. So M equals uh, the product of length of zeros divided by product of length of poles. Okay, so let's try find L1, L2, L3. L4, L5. So L1 equals, so you just use uh, Pythagoras theorem. Okay, square root 68.15 square, uh, square plus 30.098 square. Okay, calculate. Uh, you get seventy four point five, and then L two, so similar, sixty eight point one five square plus this length. Thirty point zero nine eight minus ten square. Okay, ah, uh, maafkan tulisan yang semakin memburuk. So you get seventy one point zero five, and then L three. equals um, 68.89 and then uh, L4 Sixty-eight point eight six and eight seven, 
and lastly L5. zero okay now we have all of the length then we can just uh, plug into this formula so m equals l0 so l0 is this one l2 divided by product of l of the poles so l1 l3 l4 l5 so we get m So we get a very small number. And then find the value of k, 1 over m. OK, a very big number. OK, so this is just example. But in real life, we don't use a very, very big gain. Because if you use very big gain, then it will affect the steady state error. Okay, so use if you use big gain, then you will get a, a big uh, steady state error. Okay, although um, designing this lag compensator, you will uh, reduce the settling time but maintain the overshoot, but uh, the steady state error is increasing. Okay, so this is uh, an example only. So later, maybe next week, I will show you um, uh, how to do question number two and number three if we have time. And so uh, that's the end of lecture about compensator. So uh, just a recap. So for lag compensator, uh, you use, um, it, it is used to maintain the same overshoot, but reduce the stead, steady state error. And you use uh, ZC less than PC. And then for lead compensator, you maintain the same uh, percent overshoot. Okay, you will maintain the same overshoot, but reduce the settling time. So when you reduce the settling time and maintain the percent overshoot, it will affect the steady state error. Okay, it will it might affect the steady state error. While in lead compensator, it might affect the other uh, time uh, performance like settling time, rise time, and so on. For lead compensator you use uh, ZC bigger than PC. So these two uh, compensators, lag and lead compensators, actually they can combine, okay? they can be used together, which is we call it uh, lead lag compensator or lag lead compensator. But that one is excluded in this topic because uh, they are actually redundant too much already. So uh, I hope you can understand how to calculate uh, the angles, uh, how to find uh, PC, ZC from uh, percent overshoot and so on. So in the next lecture, the final lecture, we will cover about another controller. We call it PID controller. So PID controller basically uh, almost similar to uh, lead lag compensator that I said just now by combining lead and lag compensator. But it is, um, the calculation is more easy. Okay? compared to calculating lead and lag compensator. But uh, in real life, we don't calculate manually. Okay, we use software like MATLAB to, uh, to find the compensator that we want. So that's why uh, in this example that I showed you, we get a very big pulse and also a very big gain, which is uh, a not a good selection. Okay, so if you use MATLAB, uh, maybe in your uh, project, you will you can adjust the value of ZC and PC to get a, somehow a better value for gain, okay? So that it's not too big, okay? And that's all for this lecture. Any question?
Hello, sir. Okay, so if you have no question, then you can uh, you can now try do project part uh, part five. Okay, so be reminded that uh, your project is the due date is uh, Friday study week, okay, week fifteen. So you ha still have three weeks to do, and uh, if you think your project one uh, yang hari tu is already good, you can do this uh, ala kada, okay. And if you think you are not doing well for your uh, midterm progress, please do it uh, as best as you can so that uh, it can cover your uh, final exam later. So final exam, do not rely on it because um, um, but I think it's it's not easy. Okay? It's uh, medium. It's not easy. Okay, so see you again next week, inshallah. Assalamualaikum and goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Doctor, nak tanya tak? Ah, uh, post, post ni memang positif ah sebab dia stable. Ke mana? Ah post. Uh, uh, so kita letak dia dekat negatif. So memang stable lah for the equation ni memang stable lah. Tak ada unstable punya tu. Ah uh, tak ada. Kita uh, bila kita letak compensator semua ni kita nak dia stable lah. Maksudnya uh, sistem yang kita nak design ni mestilah sistem yang stable. Oh okey. Uh, jaranglah sistem yang unstable kita nak tambah controller ke sebab dia dah unstable so if it's already unstable system let's say dia punya plan tadi kan hmm. so kita tukar plan barulah kalau dia dah memang unstable tapi okay. uh, so far tak adalah uh, question bagi plan yang unstable so kita bagi plan yang memang stable just improve in terms of uh, settling time dengan steady state error okay. Thank you, Mzah. Oh, I got to tell you. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Ah, tak dengar. Tak berapa jelas. Hello. Oh, tak dengar. Ah, kenapa? Tak berapa jelas lah sebenarnya. Ah. Problem mic, mic problem sih. Ah, dah dengar dah. Okay sih. Saya baru masuk ni saya uh, apa rumah saya wifi dia tiba tak jadi dua tiga hari. Ni dekat U, uh, UMP ke? Ha uh, saya ni saya uh, baru sampai library pukul sepuluh setengah tadi. Oh Tapi wifi wifi library pun macam nak kena cari tempat yang okey baru dia okey wifi. Ha uh, uh, sebab kat office saya pun a uh, selalu mati internet. Pakai uh. wire pun Tapi yang pokoknya susah se uh, topik untuk this week? Dia tak susah, dia just calculation dia je pening. Tapi um, maybe next week saya tunjuk example tu okay kot. Di calculation ni sama je, tak berubah lah. <tuk> tak tahu macam nak cakap. <tuk> uh.